Welcome to section 8.2b. All right, gentle people, what we're going to do in this lecture is we're going to go ahead and see what happens when we add a strong base to a buffer system. The last slide of the last lecture, what I asked you guys to do was find the pH of my buffer system. And you guys should have got a pH of 4.75. And so just to remind you, to make your buffer, you use 20 mils of a one molar solution of acetic acid and 20 mils of a one molar solution of sodium acetate. Now to this buffer system, what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and add NaOH to that buffer. And what we are trying to figure out in this lecture is what is the resulting pH? So what we're gonna do is what we've been doing before. We're gonna identify the major species in solution. So here's a list of all the chemicals that I'm adding. So let's tackle this one by one. The first thing I'm adding is acetic acid, which we know is a weak acid. So I'm gonna draw my equilibrium arrow, and then I'm gonna put my acetate plus my H plus. So remember, weak acid, equilibrium arrow, that means that this is the major species. There's not much acetate or H plus being generated when I add acetic acid into the mix. So let's go ahead and do the next chemical. And that was going to be sodium acetate. Now remember sodium acetate is a salt, so it gets a hard arrow. I'm gonna go ahead and break it up into sodium ions and the acetate ion. Now remember, a hard arrow or salt means that I am just going to make products. That sodium acetate, this guy right here, remember he doesn't exist anymore, he's completely broken up. Then the next thing we did is we added our strong base, NaOH. And so remember, strong means hard arrow, Na plus plus OH minus. Again, we are going to box this side because of the hard arrow. And lastly, always remember you're doing this in water, so water is going to be a major species. So again, we've looked at these three chemicals, we've identified all the major species and solutions, so let's see them listed out on a slide. So right here are my major species, and remember what we need to identify is the strongest acid and the strongest base. Now, out of all these things, acetic acid is my strongest acid. Sodium is gonna be neutral. The acetate ion is a base, OH minus is a base, and H2O is neutral. So now that we've got our only acid, let's find our strongest base. Now, what I did is I mentioned two bases, acetate and OH minus. Now, OH minus is going to be the strongest base. It is the strongest base that we have. So this is what I'm gonna be concerned about. Now, the next thing we gotta do is react our strongest acid with our strongest base. So here's my reaction, my strongest acid, my strongest base. And so remember, the acid is going to donate a proton to my base. Now, here's where I want you guys to be careful. Now, not only is OH- the strongest out of this series, it is also a strong base. Anytime you use a strong acid or a strong base, you are going to use a hard arrow. That means the reaction is going to go to completion. And so that means that we are going to have to do a stoichiometry problem. So let's go ahead and do that stoichiometry problem. So I'm gonna call this part one of solving our problem. And remember what we're doing here is a stoichiometry problem. And for a stoichiometry problem, what I'm gonna invoke is something called the surf table. Now your book calls this table something different, like before, reaction, after. I think SURF's a good acronym to help you guys out here. So let's go ahead and write our stoichiometric reaction. That's going to be my strongest acid plus my strongest base, 
And because my strongest base is considered a strong base, hard arrow to acetate plus H2O. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do stoichiometry. Now, one thing that I want you guys to remember that stoichiometry should be done in moles. So I'm going to go ahead and enter everything in this table in moles. So let's go ahead and write our surf table, S, R, and F. So S stands for the starting amount of material, or in other words, the starting amount of moles. To get the starting amount of moles, what you guys need to do is you need to take the molarity times the volume. So molarity times volume equals moles. Now you guys can prove this to yourself, but this is something that you guys learned in Chem 1A. So if I look at my acetic acid, I had 20 mils of one molar acetic acid. So if I go ahead and do that multiplication out, I get 0 0.02 moles of acetic acid. Now for hydroxide OH minus, I only had two mils of a one molar solution. So M times V, 0 0.002. Now I also had acetate in my solution. My acetate came from my sodium acetate and I had 20 mils of a one molar solution. So 0 0.02. Now water is something that I don't care about. So I'm gonna go ahead and put happy face and arrow down for this line. Now I have to do a reaction. So that's what R stands for. Now, whenever you do a stoichiometric problem and you had a reaction and you wanted to see how far it went, well, you have to look for the limiting reactant. So that means I want the smallest thing on my reactant side and that's how far my reaction is going to go. So that is going to dictate the change. So in this case, OH minus, the smallest number of moles, so it's going to be my limiting reagent. So I'm going to go ahead and consume all of that, and I'm going to go ahead and consume the same amount of moles of acetic acid as OH minus because they're in a one-to-one -one ratio. Since I'm chewing up my reactants, I'm making more products. And again, they're in a one-to-one -one ratio with OH minus, so plus 0 0.002. Now the final thing we're going to do is we're going to do S plus R gets us F, our final amounts. And so in this case, I have 0 0.018, 0, because it's my limiting reagent and I use it all up, and then finally, 0 0.022. Now remember, all of this is in moles, and we're going to have to change it for the next step in this problem. So the next thing we have to do is we have to identify the major species after I use up all my strong base. So remember, OH- minus was my limiting reagent in the first part of this problem. Now, if we take a look at the major species before my surf table, here was my list. Now, after my surf table, I used up all my OH minus, and so whatever's left over is the major species. Now, again, we have to identify the strongest acid. So this is gonna be my strongest acid, and then we have to identify the strongest base, which is going to be acetate. Now, look at this. The strongest acid, the strongest base, well, they're conjugates of each other. And remember what happens if that's the case? This becomes an equilibrium problem. And so I'm going to deal with the equilibrium of acetic acid and see what the pH is going to be. All right, so this is going to be the second part of this problem. And now we have an equilibrium. And remember, for an equilibrium, we are going to go ahead and use an ice table. Now, remember, for an ice table, I want to do things in either pressure and ATMs, 
but more specifically to this problem, we're gonna do it in concentration, and so we want everything in molarity. So the next thing that I have to do is I have to get all my concentrations in molarity. Now to get molarity, what you guys have to do is you have to take the moles and divide it by the total volume. Now the total volume in this case is me adding up all the volumes of my solutions. So that was 20 mils plus 20 mils plus two mils. So in total, 42 mils. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide each one of these moles by 0 0.042 liters and we're going to write this last line in terms of molarity. And so if I were going to go ahead and divide everything by 0 0.042 liters, what I would get is 0 0.429 molar, 0 molar, and lastly 0 0.524 molar. So again, remember, now I have this in molarity. All right, so now that I've got everything in molarity, I can start my ice table. So I'm gonna write my reaction, CH3OOH, in equilibrium with acetate plus H plus. So again, I, C, and E. And so now we are gonna put our initial concentrations and our initial concentrations are going to be the final concentrations we figured out in part one of our problem. So for acetic acid, 0 0.429. For acetate, 0 0.524. And I have no H plus here, so this is going to be zero. So my change, since I have a zero on my product side, plus, plus, and my reactants minus, Everything is in a one-to-one -one ratio, 0 0.429 minus X, 0 0.524 plus X, and then finally X at the end. Now what we have is our equilibrium concentrations. And so now what we can do is we can finally look up our Ka. So I look on our Ka table, Acetic acid is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. I put my products 0 0.524 plus X times X all divided by 0 0.429 minus X. Again, I'm gonna do the same thing. My K is really small, so I'm gonna do an approximation. I'm gonna say that this is 0 0.5 to four, the X doesn't matter since I'm adding it, times X, and then on the bottom, 0 0.429, and I'm gonna go ahead and eliminate that minus X. I go ahead and solve for X, X is 1.4 times 10 to the negative fifth, a really small number, so my assumption was correct. X, remember, is my H plus concentration, and so the pH equals the negative log of my H plus concentration, and I can stick this value in. I get a pH out of this whole thing being 4.83. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that takes care of our equilibrium problem. And so just to remind you what we did is we had this buffer, and to that buffer, we added a strong base. Now the buffer by itself just had a pH of 4.75. After we added that strong base, we got this new pH of 4.83. And so this amounted to a pH change of 0 0.08. So just to give you an idea, if I did that same experiment with 40 mils of DI water, has a pH of seven, after I add that strong base, the pH would have jumped to 12.7. That's a huge jump in pH, 5.7. But we just calculated the pH change in a buffer solution. In a buffer solution, the pH would have only changed by 0.8. So I hope this shows you guys that a buffer is truly resistant 
to pH changes. Now the question you guys might be asking is how did that buffer manage to do this? Well, let's dig a little deeper. Now, this is the first part of the problem that we tried to evaluate. Now, remember, what we did in the first problem was a stoichiometry problem. We had a strong base interacting with our weak acid. This goes to completion. But look at what happened. I took a strong base and I converted it into another base, but I made a weak base. So this is how a buffer works. It takes something that is strong and makes it into something that is weak. And you can go ahead and test this out with HCl. You'll see that HCl, a strong acid, is going to be consumed and it will become a weak acid. And this is why a buffer is resistant to pH change. All right, gentle people, to recap, we had a buffer solution, we add something strong, H plus or OH minus, and what we know is we are going to get a change in pH. If I do this type of problem, this problem can be solved in two steps. The first step is to actually get that strong entity, H plus or OH minus, to react with our buffer system. This is going to go to completion because I have a strong entity, so it is a stoichiometry problem. After you finish that stoichiometry problem, you're going to have new concentrations of your buffer system. So once you figure out those new concentrations, you can go ahead and do the second part of the problem, which is the equilibrium problem. Now remember, an equilibrium problem is just going to have your buffer system that means the weak something and its conjugate. Once you establish that equilibrium, make sure you guys go ahead and do an ice table to find the pH. I hope that made sense and remember to stay safe Chem1B.